Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day for the meeting that we have today. We pray and seek for your wisdom, but also your guidance in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can take your seats. <laughs> Uh, good morning to all that are watching us by social media and to members of the press. Um, we are gathered here at the party secretariat. Uh, we have um, the Secretary General, Honorable Rafael Nagachinda, who will give a few remarks, especially about um, events um, in Petauke and other matters relating to the party. Uh, we are flanked by members of the Central Committee that are here and members from the province and district of Lusaka. We are aware about, I think, the sad development in our country relating to the cholera outbreak that broke in October. We have expressed concern that this government uh, did not respond on time. The country already has a plan to end cholera in Zambia and their strategies that were evolved. Um, under President Edgar Lungu, Zambia developed um, what is called the country mouth sector cholera, cholera elimination plan from 2019 to 2025. It's called MCP, MCEP in short. So it's a mouth sector cholera elimination plan 2019 to 2025. In 2019, the Zambian government moved a motion at the United Nations uh, where the world agreed with us that uh, we should end cholera by 2030. For Zambia, we gave our target that cholera should be done away with by 2025. The, the plan, the overall aim of that plan is to reduce morbidity, to reduce mortality due to cholera and achieve cholera elimination in Zambia by 2025. You saw what government put in plan uh, from 2019 to date. That's why there was no outbreak in 2019, 2020, where we had actually a lot of floods. 2021, there was no cholera outbreak because of the measures we had. Our friends came in office in 2021 and they abandoned our plans. They stopped the daily cleanings that were done and then the collective cleaning that was being done at the month end, every Saturday of the month end. They abandoned all the works that were done. And the lives we've lost, over 310, are totally needless. The lives lost can be placed on this government. The outbreak occurred in 29, I mean, in October 2023. There was no response. In fact, they hid the issue. They put no measures. They issued no statutory instrument. They embarked on nothing. In December, when the lives were being lost, were actually all of them on holiday. Now, we were recognizing the lives that have been lost and to pass our condolences to, uh, to the families that have lost. We are unhappy with the conditions that have been placed at uh, the National Cholera Center. That's not how you deal with the issue of cholera. And you know, they had four or five months to prepare, but they did nothing. 
And I would invite the Secretary General, I think, to give his remarks. I thought we could precede those remarks by recognizing the loss of lives. This is a disaster. 320 lives. It's a huge, huge disaster. Who do we hold accountable for? Especially that plans were there, resources are there, expertise is there. How could we lose so many lives? What about Prophet Nakachinda? A lot of things have been happening. Uh, just give a preview of what I think we'll be doing this year and also uh, uh, just to our brief meeting today. I know a lot of people wanted to come to this meeting but due to cholera issues, you, you told everyone to keep away so that we can really also as a party comply with our own regulations. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Ambassador, and Chair Information. Uh, allow me to acknowledge the presence of our uh, Honorable members of Central Committee, uh, the province uh, representatives of the provincial committee, the SACA, DC committee, those who are representing, and those who are coming from the student science. Uh, first of all, uh, we thought we could take advantage. We thought that we could take advantage of uh, uh, today to give guidance on how we're going to proceed uh, with our contribution uh, to the fight against the Korea epidemic. We were in government, as Ambassador has indicated, uh, we had uh, developed you know, programs and a policy with a target of eliminating corona by 2020-2025, which was also acknowledged on the continent and global. Uh, by the time the European they were getting into government, I think uh, uh, you do remember that uh, on our behalf, I honor the Vice President and the new you know, coordinator for DMMU were even being awarded for the effective uh, response that was acknowledged not only to do with uh, corona but also COVID and other disasters that had engulfed this country. Uh, I think our performance was uh, highly acknowledged and we thought we could bring that experience to the fore, knowing and seeing what is going on uh, in Lusaka and other parts of the country in terms of the inaugural epidemic. We had written to the council um, so that we could cooperate with the council and participate in programs they are undertaking in terms of cleaning because obviously Corella is related to IG and um, uh, people chose to turn politic around that effort but will not relate. So the directive now is that in our respective consultants, let our officials um, working through and coordinating with my office begin to do the little we can. This is not for, meant for us to try and gain political marriage. I think we need to demonstrate like always the value of life. So DC Chairman, our provincial secretary, please let's come up with small groups uh, without necessarily risking our people because obviously one of the challenges when it comes to such an ep epidemic is if they are bigger groups, uh, you risk giving those who want to make interventions. So let's come with a well-managed um, in a system of small groups and we begin to contribute. The few um, materials that were put together, we will use that system to be able to reach out to our people and participate in the fight against the pandemic. The UPND have demonstrated um, fairly even in responding effectively to what our people are going through. The numbers that were recording on a daily basis of those who are dying have even surpassed the numbers and the rate at which people are dying to, you know, to COVID at the time that COVID didn't even have a vaccine and so on and it was a strange phenomenon at the time. But because of our effective response uh, when we were in government, we were able to minimize the numbers. But corona that we know and we know how to prevent, our friends are failing to respond to it. When the president was being asked about the fact that you have declared Hilo Stadium as uh, you know, a place to 
which uh, you know people have to be treated that the Hilo Stadium has no water. He chose to <laughs> one thing to insult the opposition and call opposition witches and black members. <laughs> you, you don't expect a leader uh, who is concerned about the lives of people to read it all the time politics. And I think we want to say to Misaka and the uh, please, two years and some months in office, you should uh, at least learn some decorum and some presidential manners. You you can't all the time behave as if you are at the farm. Of course, we knew, we know that just a, a day before he was in Wenga, you know, at his farm, and possibly he can't differentiate when he is operating as a president and when he's operating as a farmer at his Wenga <laughs> farm. Uh, and I think that's, those are some of the things we want him to really quickly come out of. Uh, in relation to the party, uh, we continue to ask our members across the country. We know that you are agitated. You know that uh, we know that you feel that uh, law enforcement agencies are not applying themselves pro professionally. We know that the anxiety is around the, uh, the judiciary, uh, which is supposed to be the conscience of our nation and our society. Uh, that regardless of the disputes that you have, when you go to the court, you're expecting that justice will be served. Uh, all those anxieties we are aware of, but we continue to call upon you. Uh, to remain calm and trust that the wheels of justice may look and seem slow but ultimately will turn and the truth will prevail. Um, the attempts by UPND to continue trying to find confusion within the patriotic front, led by Ms. Aka in the HM himself, have only gone to expose them of who they really are. Misaka in the HM has been preaching of being a Democrat and that his presidency will signal the beginning of a new era where the rule of law will prevail and so on. But the opposite is actually true. He has even turned out to be worse than some of the dictators we have known on the continent and beyond. And uh, um, I want to say on behalf of the President, President Edgar Chakalungu and the leadership, we don't consider Mao Samba as uh, our enemy. <coughs> Mao Samba is just a brother who is not well. He needs help. And the UPN, they are taking advantage of his condition um, to do what they are doing with him. Um, and therefore, uh, the real enemy we have and the enemy of democracy is Misaka and the HLM and the UPND. And that is where the focus is. Um, and the, uh, we we saw the unfortunate uh, you know, event yesterday. In the morning, I think I did appeal um, to my brother Mao Sampa, uh, I think to be considerate of even the young people and some of the people he's using. Um, I think there's, you know, a lot of anxiety in, in the country, not only from members of Patriotic Front, but the general citizen. Like you saw yesterday in the Tauka where the general public basically just picked up those two boys who have been insulting everybody and so on. We, if there was any, you know, a violence we regret that that happened uh, but we want to ask patriotic front members across the country uh, the UPND are trying to set a trap for us that when we react you know physically they brand us as a violent political party let's not succumb to that uh, discipline is required but there's a way you can make out discipline it doesn't have to all the time lead to activity of that nature um, we know that there are attempts by the police to try and the implicate non-strong PF officials in Petal and in Eastern province. One of them being is one you know that at some point he was arrested for on trumped up charges. Now yesterday, I think because uh, there was um, uh, guidance, uh, they were trying to provide that those uh, boys be taken to the police. Uh, the police were making statements uh, to the effect that he uh, is criminal and liable over an I incident that we have verified he was not even present. But because he's a strong official and other officials in 
attack and in eastern province they are targeting as a way of dampening the morale of members of Patutu Front. So we want just to call upon the police, please desist from being political in your undertaking of your duties. Be professional. If there was anything that happened in Petauke, investigate and let the real individuals, if I told somebody to say, be the ones that will be the But as far as we are concerned, what happened yesterday only goes to demonstrate that the people are agitated by the behavior of some of these people who are sponsored by UPND. Um, but I think, as it were, we also heard that uh, there are individuals that um, want to continue to try and abuse these premises. Um, as the leadership were saying, please, Take your UPND nonsense to UPND Secretariat and not PF Secretariat. Here we will not tolerate uh, an attempt or any attempt by UPND, Misaka in the to try and mess up with these pro properties that um, through sweat, hard work and dedication, the members of Patriotic Front were able to put up this outfit. We will not tolerate activities of that nature from Misaka in the We know that living well. Uh, as we have read in social media and in Saka in the are trying to make the Mount Sampa look like there's uh, you know, some legitimacy and followership somewhere. You can never impose a followership. True leadership attracts its own followers. The members say, You don't have to impose yourself on the people. If you, if you have a genuine you know, um, leadership uh, uh, core and qualities, people just thought you don't have to impose yourself. Uh, Mr. Aka in the HM has posed himself on the Zambian people and look what has happened in two years. He has lost support even from his own relatives. So we repent. That's why he went there pleading no Banda Gubera Pono by Gubera Guri by Gukana Guri Pen Yagao no Kenya Gai Gagao no Gagasi Ed Garumu Gajibu State House. We will come in his house. Why was I doing not a way mature than she does? She doesn't know you want it, but we want just to assure him. Definitely Gubera Project, it is a program that will be actualized in 2026. And the Gubera program is not President Ed Gachagarum, the one you want to pursue. Nice as a Kubera Rapo project. Kubera Rapo is an agenda of the Zambian people yeah. in relation to Patriotic Front collectively. Yeah. And Patriotic Front will definitely come back into power. Uh, let's not allow uh, provincial chairman. Yes, sir. You are charged by the Secretary General. Don't tolerate anybody to come and mess up with our property. That will not allow. And we want the police to remain in their office. There are more things they can do. They cannot be coming here to try and disturb the peace of patriotic flag members. With that said, the uh, chairman information on the MCC. Thank you very much. The rest, I think, we can speak off camera. Um, there are anxieties around matters in court. Um, we just commenced the year. We'll be informing you as they are developing. I think uh, both the president and the SG have stated that um, the matters of uh, uh, in the judiciary are matters for our lawyers. Mm -hmm. But we'll be giving you an update. Our duty is to do the politics. Mm -hmm. You've been given an assignment. Let's help save lives. Let's clean Lusaka. That must be done. So one of the matters that came up yesterday is a case of the 11 uh, the nine MPs that were expelled, allegedly expelled you know, and uh, it came up in the constitutional court it was adjourned to January 24th, there are um, internal legal matters that are being done in relation to that case and other cases 
the, uh, you have an able legal team that is handling those matters. I know there are a lot of anxieties, especially when it's reported in newspapers. But our work should be on the ground. The PF must be visible wherever you are. The PF must continue to work. The court may not really be a court. I'm a politics one too. I'm a politics in the So I think those remain the matching orders that we engage legally, which our lawyers are doing. Politically, you should remain politically active. Account for your members. Continue to recruit. Whether you are in Mwansagombe or you are in Zambezi, whether you are in Mundazi or you are in Solwezi, continue to work. Um, SG, I think you've made everything clear, especially about Peter Uke. We've expressed concern about Rizwan Patel because here are the police. Those boys, how many times have they been beaten, especially by the UPN? Mm -hmm. Did you see the police issues at State now? Did you see the police even go to pick whoever had beaten those boys? Mm -hmm. Now they want it to be like it's a PF issue. It is not. The PF were not at Peter Uke bus stop. Rizwan was in the field, was not even there. But they are pinpointing him because he's one of our strongest members, one of our strongest leaders in Eastern province. So there will be, there'll be attempts to discourage you who are on the ground. There will be attempts to scandalize you. So that Mwanenuka, Mwambo Kutina, Rizwan has done nothing as SG has put it. In fact, Rizwan helped when he learned about that, like SG was saying, that take those people to the police. No one should take law and to their own hands. So it, the, the police should never politic. That is why we have consistently called for the resignation or dismissal of that IG. Because he, he behaves like he's working from the UPND party secretariat. His statements are more sensational than the UPND. Even Laura Mitchell who supports them must call for the dismissal of that man. That the IG has tarnished the name of the police. And you saw the statement yesterday. They haven't even gone on the ground. They're already naming people. They're already associating the matter to the PF. That we reject. And we repeat the call for that incompetent uh, IG. That who behaves more UPND than the UPND themselves. To resign and not to scandalize people. So for the media, good day. For any updates, we will we'll inform you. Thank you for coming. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.